On January 5th, Niji Sanji shocked fans around the world by dropping the graduation notice for Pomo Rainbow, one of Niji Sanji's earliest recruits who debuted back in 2021 among the first English wave called Lazulite. Since then, she has continued to become one of the most prominent and successful members of her organization, which is why her graduation announcement was particularly concerning as she was considered one of the main pillars of Niji Sanji. These news also came at the crux of Niji Sanji backlash and speculation following a series of events involving one of their most popular livers, Selentatsky, to which we'll get into the deeds later. Fans felt blindsided by this announcement, who seemingly came out of nowhere. Homo has cited that she wanted to pursue other creative endeavors as part of the reasons for her graduation. But was this announcement really out of nowhere, or were they telltale signs leading to this. When Pomo graduated, she unprivated all of her membership streams and it got revealed that her management had turned down a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for her. Mm, how do I put it? There was a really big opportunity that was offered to me. And I get why it wasn't accepted, but it's really frustrating. But things weren't negotiated or anything it was just five days later after this particular clip would start circulating online niji sanji management would reprivate this membership vod despite their company mission clearly articulating values such as be considerate speak with honesty and be sincere with your actions on their official website it's astonishing to observe the substantial backlash directed towards niji sanji the company had a promising debut and it appeared back then that the ceo demonstrated considerable foresight during the company's inception however this foresight hasn't translated into positive public reception in recent years it highlights a stark contrast between their auspicious start and the decline in the public perception of them over time. So let's find out exactly how this came to be. Any Color was originally founded in 2017 by CEO Riku Tezumi under its previous company name Ichikara. He actually took a leave of absence from his university to launch the company at just the age of 21 years old. Today, he is 26 years old and his company is worth upward of 2.5 billion dollars as far reported in october 2022 riku is now worth more than 1 billion dollars making him one of the youngest billionaires in japan his story is quite impressive after participating in a long-term internship at tokyo-based web solution provider kix he took a leave of absence of wasada university to launch the company subsequently he launched the niji sanji division in 2018 followed by a rebranding of the company into the name that we all know today, Any Color. But Riku is an enigmatic figure to which we don't know much about besides the few articles written about how much he's worth. So what do netizens do when they're missing information? They fill in the blanks. And that's where the whole Niji Sanji CEO buying a yacht memes comes from. The medal for the yachts has to come from somewhere. Anon, how do you think Riku builds his yacht? After all, what do young rich kids spend their money on? Yacht, of course. However, Riku has never flaunted or officially disclosed that he owns a yacht. Yes, I know, disappointing. But it's necessary to clarify that as people clearly believe this to be true when it's unfounded. However, it is quite telling of the perception people hold regarding the leader of this company. It's good to note that Riku originally found the Niji with the purpose of promoting the use of Life 2D models and streaming as opposed to the 3D format that was popular at the time due to Kizuna Ai. At the center of Niji's marketing push was a revolutionary tech their custom facial recognition app, utilizing then the new iPhones X, which could connect to a streaming software. Today, this technology has become the norm, but back then, it was brand new. At this point, he aggressively sought out investment to expand his company and take a large part of the market share. In 2018, there were auditions starting for a Chinese branch in Shanghai and Taipei, which would result in the recruitment of 16 livers. This was a joint project made with a company called Capsule Inc. Unfortunately for Capsule, Niji would not renew their contract. Capsule would retain the livers and change their name to V Ego, but would shortly go under and close their doors by March 2020. But this would not deter Riku Tezumi, as he had other plans. 
Just a month after the end of the original Chinese branch in April 2019, the virtual real project would then emerge from a joint operation between any color and a popular Chinese streaming website, Billy Billy, to which would be the beginning of a long standing partnership with China. At present, Niji Sanji boasts over 179 active livers across two branches, 145 members in Niji Sanji's main branch, 34 members in the EN branch, on top of the 67 members within Virtual Real, which is quite the feat. This partnership helped them penetrate and navigate the difficult Chinese market as well as bring ton of venture capital for their rapid expansion they wanted. Today, Bilibili is the fourth biggest shareholder within the company. This underlines the importance of this long-standing partnership within these two industry titans and how any color's duty to one of its principal shareholders can affect some of the decisions they make. Continuing their oversea expansion, in September of 2019, Nichi launched their Indonesian branch. And in January of 2020, both the Korean and Indian branches also had officially begun their activities. Nichi then set their eyes on the English market. First, they tried to rebrand their Indian branch to an English one. But when that didn't work, they decided to axe the whole India branch. Much to the public's surprise, as they had grown fond of these talents. Already there, any color or Ichikara back then received tons of criticism from fans who had grown attached to these idols. These aren't just products you can shelve, these are people who have nurtured a relationship with their fandoms. But Niji Sanji kept on pushing forward. On May 2021, their first EN wave dubbed Lazulite debuted, consisting of three female livers, Elira Pandora, Pomo Rainpuff and Finana Ryugu. In December 2021, the fourth wave of Niji EN male division Luxium debuted with a bang, capturing the hearts of a previously untapped demographic in the West, the female audience. Inspired by the success of their male VTuber Kuzuha in Japan, Niji Sanji soared to new heights, propelled by notable members such as Vox Akuma, who emerged as the company's highest earner. The organization garnered acclaim for its innovative approach. This era is often regarded as Niji Sanji's golden age, with the initial 20 members dubbed the Golden 20. However, I believe this narrative is primarily crafted to undermine the potential of new and emerging talents within Niji Sanji. In my humble opinion, it seems unjust to imply that the best days are already behind them, especially considering they weren't even the first 20 VTubers given the prior shutdown of an entire branch. But I guess it makes them the Golden 20 survivors or something. Something. Already here, we mark a pattern of extremely fast expansion, but also the swift termination of entire divisions that are underperforming in the favor of focusing on more lucrative projects. The term shotgun approach has been used several times to describe Niji Sanji's extremely fast pace at which they debut new talents. The shotgun approach is a marketing term used to describe the more is better mentality, meaning they kind of just throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and see what sticks. Its perk is to increase the odds of hitting a target when it's more difficult to focus on one. The V2B community being so new and wide, it sort of makes sense why they would choose this approach over a more cultivated one. And this is something Niji Sanji has previously stated in their quarterly reports. The cultivated approach, on the other hand, is the opposite. It's a thoughtful, focused and deliberate strategy of creating and marketing new products. The product in this case being VTubers. This approach is also highly popular in idol groups such as AKB48, where the strategy is to create multiple groups of the same branch in several countries. The AKB48 group is the highest earning musical act in Japan's history. So perhaps there is some validity to that strategy, although AKB has more than 90 members across various groups and Nichi Sanji has well over double that amount. But for now, everything appeared to be going well, but this trend in Nichi Sanji's business practices continued. Slowly but surely, the once vibrant and glossy facade started to show signs of underlying cracks. First, it started when Niji Sanji decided to absorb the Korean and Indonesian branch into its main Japanese branch. The livers were pretty much given the choice to graduate or continue with them. Those who could speak Japanese fairly well stayed and adapted, but for those who felt like it wasn't worth it anymore, they just left. 
There isn't many Korean or Indonesian streamers left in Tuniji Sanji nowadays. And while public opinion mostly swayed towards agreeing that the Korean branch merge was for the best as they came with allegations of mismanagement and allegations of bullying within the branch, this was due to some weird power imbalance that pre-existed before the Korean branch was even a thing. So they came with a lot of baggage. There's a lot more to this story, but unfortunately, it's very muddled and we won't have time to get into it today. But it probably was for the best. But the merger of the Indonesian branch, on the other hand, generated discontent among the public for several reasons. Firstly, there was a concerning trend of Niji ID members gradually leaving with a significant number of graduation one after the other. Additionally, the branch faced issues of neglect experiencing a decline in support that left members almost unsupported. Instances like Mika stating that it didn't matter what she said as the manager wasn't watching her streams anyway reflected the diminishing engagement. But the concrete evidence lay in the list of graduated members where out of a total of 20, 12 had already graduated, leaving only 8 members remaining. This pattern of departures contributed to the overall dissatisfaction within the community. Recently, the departure of one of Niji Sanji's most popular streamer, Mika, has stirred significant attention. Listening to her reflections on the graduation, it becomes apparent that she felt neglected, contributing to the growing speculations about Niji Sanji's talents mismanagement. Mika highlighted instances where she was supposed to sell merchandise at a convention, but the management failed to provide her with anything to sell. They basically forgot about her. Other ex-ID members such as Reza Aveluna has also talked about not even having enough resources to go on with basic life necessities before graduating. We were just talking about my our ex-ID members. Some of them are really good, like content creators. They really do deserve uh, more support and one of them being financial everything is about money if you have an idea of, for a content if there's no money for it you can't make the content if you don't get money from it well you might it's like some people feel like my as well they do other things that will bring the money there's a lot of amazing content creator within um xid the problem is just there's no one thing I'd say, there's no funding. Again, donation and our stuff, AdSense, it's just not enough. Now, before you say, but Rima, why is his experience so different? Many other livers have talked about enjoying their time within the company. Look, these VTubers have what we call a survivor bias. Survivor bias occurs when we only consider successful outcomes, ignoring those who failed, leading to a distorted view of reality. It's like judging a game only by the winners without acknowledging those who didn't make it. If you want to put things in perspective, Niji Sanji has employed a total of 233 VTubers since his existence in 2018, and 73 of them are not with the company anymore. 73 of them will never get to see their dreams come true. Plus, it's not everyone that will treat everybody equally. But in general, I find it interesting to see how one truly behaves by how they treat somebody they don't think can be useful to them. It is well known that Niji Sanji has a culture of meritocracy and competition. They basically throw you out there and give you a big old slap on the butt and tell you, go get him, son. So VTubers from the same company are competing for the same amount of limited resources against each other's. And those who manage to stand out from the crowd and generate the most numbers have access to these resources and have the most chances of being successful. But back to Mika. During her graduation announcement, she expressed a sense of accomplishment, suggesting she had reached a ceiling in her potential with Niji Sanji. When Niji... I kind of like had goals, right? You guys know that like I made goals and like I want to reach this amount of subs or get a 3D or have a concert. Basically, as time went on, I realized there are certain goals that I can and cannot achieve. So I wanted to achieve all the goals I possibly could that is fully in my control. Basically, all goals that I see as achievable in Niji Sanji have been achieved. Notably, she also expressed a desire for a 3D model, a resource that Niji Sanji should technically 
have access to, as highlighted in an official interview on the AnyColor website. In this interview, the leader of the overseas talent managers and the head of overseas of operations described their responsibility to connect talents with the necessary resources to fulfill their needs, stating that the manager takes the lead to obtain a budget from the company to create 3D models. The key to this job is finding out how to help the livers maximize their self-expression. So if it's the manager's job to take the lead to obtain budgets from the company to create 3D models, why was this not done for Mika? We don't know. But the real downer that I believe brought morale down, not within just the fans alone, but within the company itself, was Nichi Sanji's cancellation, or should I say postponement, of the AR Live 3D concert, to which the talents had been prepping for over eight months. Recording was done, the talents had traveled abroad and taken time out of their busy schedule to rehearse for this event, and then Niji Sanji pulled the plug on it. Not only that, but the announcement itself was so badly worded that talents like Pomu had to clarify it. They said cancelled? It's postponed. It's postponed. <laughs> It's, I know what the wording is, but it's postponed. The livers also lost the money from their travel tickets. Allegedly, they only got reimbursed 1-2% to of their travel expenses. Sadly, due to the livers freelance status, which lacks the same protection as a salaried position, this is legal. In contrast, salaried talents in companies such as Hololive typically have their lodging and travel plans covered by the company. The difference in employment status contributes to variations in financial support within these agencies. This event the event, along with a series of other mishaps, marks a pivotal point in the public perception of the company and, more importantly, the disregard for a talent's time, effort, and money. The general discouragement can be seen throughout the liver's reaction, who did not necessarily mince their words. You can see here even Niji's golden goose, Box Akuma, tweeting, Everyone is so tired, give your Oshi some love today. We're all devastated by the event being cancelled due to COVID. Putting COVID in quotation with a skull emoji should tell you all you need. Prior to the AR cancellation, there was another 3D concert, Niji Fest 2022, that Niji Sanji VTubers were supposed to participate in, which unfortunately many of them got cancelled due to unforeseen events as stated by the company. Indeed, just a day before the event, the agency announced that a couple talents wouldn't be able to make it. Many livers took to Twitter again to express their disappointment, but this was especially sad for Pomo, who had repeatedly been asking management for a 3D model without being able to get one. It's good to note that she finally got her long overdue 3D debuts 11 months ago. But that wouldn't be the end of their worries, as just a few days later, Niji Sanchi drops a huge bomb that would backfire so immensely that it would even scare a Minecraft creeper. On March 10th, they released a skating letter announcing the graduation of the liver Zion, detailing the many ways in which she had broken the rules. The statement specifically highlighted offensive remarks regarding discrimination and sexual assault, endorsing comments defaming Niji Sanji livers and any color through her personal social media accounts and falsely claiming to have received permission from any color Inc after a viewer mentioned a prohibited action. In my opinion, in my opinion, in my opinion, no lawsuit here, sweetie, this was made to throw Zion under the bus. The letter was received with mixed feelings. Some wonder why it was so much more detailed than all the other announcements we've got before, and some being pleased she got laid off as she had gotten quite a few detractors over the mishaps she had been involved in recently. And on this note, I know the community keeps calling out for transparency, but to me, it's always a little eerie to see a detailed letter from your employer telling the world in all the ways you fucked up. But anyway, that wasn't the end of it, because Zion, under the identity of Sayu, then fired back and decided to break her silence. And when it comes to this particular Nichi Yab, I haven't seen a plant blow up this spectacularly since I tried.
Indeed, in her tweet longer that she released to defend her name, the public made some startling discoveries that would change the way they perceived the company forever. In the disclosed document, several disconcerting revelations emerged. First, Niji Sanji's management imposed restrictions on Liver's social media use, including prohibiting the use of their past life Twitter accounts and locking them out of their main accounts during suspensions. This even led to penalties when Zion accidentally liked the reply while browsing. Second, the revelation that Niji Sanji livers were not salaried. Indeed, in an interview, when asked about a monthly salary, the response was, no, but I can tell you that if you sign under us, you'll make more than you're making right now. This lack of guaranteed income structure, especially during debuts, is unsettling. Low salary. Uh, we also get money on voicebacks and stuff. So it, I can't really say if it's low salary or not. How hard they do it, they don't exactly get enough resource for them to even eat. Thirdly, the XLA branch having a single manager who was a two weeks old hire adds another layer of concern about the management structure within Niji. Notably, one reason cited for Zion's suspension was direct messaging a manager, which seems like a seemingly disproportionate response. Shouldn't you be able to message a manager when you're not getting the answers you require? from your direct manager? But perhaps the most unsettling revelation was the confirmation of stealth suspensions within the company. Zion's manager pressured her to fabricate a story for her fans, contributing to a culture where suspensions are disguised as breaks. This revelation fostered public skepticism about future livers announcements or breaks as we'll see later in the video. And this, coupled with the closing of various Niji Sanji branches, fuels public perception that Niji Sanji may have overextended itself or mismanaged its talents. The lack of transparency and questionable management practices have led to growing concerns among the community. Sayu even went on to later reveal that the livers also did not get to keep their silver play buttons either. The silver play button serves as a token to celebrate a creator's achievement once they reach 100k subscribers. And during a stream, she stated, I don't believe anyone there gets to keep um, or receive play buttons because it is the company's, right? But then Petra and other Niji Liver tweeted about receiving their play buttons or starting showing them, which made people wonder who was telling the truth. But then people were quick to point out it looked like it was all posted from the same table, so the Livers might not have access to them physically. Looks like the same standard white table you usually have in an office. Or on a jet! I see what she did here, Anon. Melted down, sold for jet money. What am I truly mind-blowingly confused about though is why not just ship it to them? Surely it's not that expensive. <laughs> They're worth billions of dollars. Surely that won't make any color go broke, right? But I guess this is just one other thing that the VTubing industry won't ever reveal. Another example where fans were highly skeptical of the company is when Niji Sanji VTuber Kyo Kaneko apologized on Next just one day after stating solidly that he would not apologize for a joke he made. I I do understand that that will upset people. However, I do want to say, um, I stand by what I said earlier when I say I don't believe that is racist. I really don't. I hate to break it to you, but I don't believe that's racist. And I think you coming at me and assuming that it means I'm a racist or that is racist is you're creating a conclusion based on my character about something that you don't really understand the full scope of based on an out of context clip i still don't agree that it's racist ben speculated that these words sounded more like the words of a corporation rather than his own and alleged a week-long suspension rather than him opting to take a break there are numerous other instances that have contributed to a decline in niji sanji's public reputation and while i can cover them all here or will be here until tomorrow i'll highlight a few significant ones first and foremost niji sanji faced criticism 
criticism for attempting to suppress voices critical of their practices by either striking or DMCing creators like False ID and Keo. This kind of action generally doesn't sit well with audiences who heavily dislike feeling deceived. Additionally, there were issues with the quality of the merchandises that they try to sell to fans, particularly the Luxium first anniversary rings leading to a fan revolt. Or another instance was when t-shirts quality were so low and simple that fans compared them to bootleg VTuber merch. This event untimely came right after Mista joked that the livers earned a meager 1 to 3% revenue from merchandise. I'm just kidding bro, I get like 1% from merch sales. I ain't get shit. Fuck man, I'm getting scammed myself. I, I wish I was joking. Uh, anyway. And these allegations were so wild that even Kason reacted to them, tweeting, Damn, one to two percent is fucked up. Companies, please, please respect the talents. If you can't, just let them go without any threats and loss. I used to be bitching about 50% being low, but what the fuck? Damn, I am so lucky. Sparking a discussion on how best to support a talent, to which Pomu then emphasized that the best way to support a talent is actually through voice pack purchases, so you know what to do. You want to support the talent? Make sure you get some of those sweet voice packs. Lastly, the departures of Niji Sanji Livers, Mr. Rias, and Nina Kozaka to V Shoujo have attracted attention. Both of them hinted at feeling more supported, appreciated, and cared for by their new management. Um, but it was just so surprising to me that, you know, my manager's like, how can I help? You need me to hire somebody, artist, you need like, a background person. Like, what do you need? How is this going to go? Do you need editing? Do you need music? And I, I, I told her I'm not used to that, so... Additionally, they kind of left dropping many hints and jabs at their former company. At this point, there is mounting dissatisfaction within the Nijisanji community, and it feels palpable. It feels like it is about to reach a tipping point, until it finally did, on none other than Christmas Day. Selene Tetsuki is one of the most prominent members of the Nijisanji English branch. On Christmas Day, she released a cover song called Last Cup of Coffee, which was later privated by Nijisanji in the following hours. This song was a collaboration with all her fans planned as a Christmas gift for them for several months. In a video, she personally invested up to $15,000. The privatization came as a surprise. Selene Tetsuki took to Twitter, formally X, or is it the other way around, to encourage people to re-upload and share the song as she wasn't allowed to. Speculation then arose regarding a copyright issue, but this couldn't be the case as Selene had obtained permission from Lily Peach's producer to cover the song. It like, uh, because they were like missing the producer uh, approval, and then so like I actually reached out to the producer because I realized like we had like mutual like follow followings. And then I was like, hey, can I do a cover of your song? And then he was like, oh yeah, yeah, of course, of course you can. Some suggested that the privatization might be due to missing paperwork for a song that involved a large amount of people. But more nefarious insinuations arose from her strong hits at graduation and allusions to former Niji Sanji members who had graduated and joined another company within the video. It's important to note that these are only speculations as I'm sharing the very narratives that have been circulating around this event. Adding to this intrigue, Selen's Niji Sanji's colleague Millie Parfait commented on the post raising questions about final approval before releasing the video. This shifted the conversation toward potential approval issues. Fans, dissatisfied, reached out to Niji Sanji customer support receiving a generate corporate PR response, confirming that it was indeed an approval issue. But this response was not enough to convince the mass majority majority of the already suspicious fanbase. In fact, the Millie's response threw oil on an already burning fire of discontentment. Fans wondered why this wasn't settled privately in DMs and felt that it was performative. Whether this was Millie's attempt to quell the flames of speculation and backlash against the company they all work for, or perhaps it was a genuine attempt
attempt at understanding the situation, the general public didn't perceive it positively. And all hell broke loose with the different factions fighting each other online. And she received backlash for potentially siding with the corporation and throwing her colleague under the bus. In either case, it didn't look too good. And the reason why was because fans were already so frustrated. This video privatization came after a series of events this year where many of Selentatsky's projects were either interfered with or straight up shut down by management. The first instance was when the management shut down her Fall Guys tournament and she was then informed that she wouldn't be able to organize any more international tournaments moving forward. No explanation were provided for these decisions, by the way. As stated, there will not be any more international events organized by me. I'll uh, still be able to participate in international events and organize other events, but it will be for EN only. I know a lot of fans are looking forward to the Fall Guys tournament, and I didn't want to leave people in the dark, so I wanted to rip the bandaid off that has officially fell through in the end. I messed up earlier, tweeting about my excitement and starting my plans with organizing the tournament, as I assumed my old approvals for it was still in factor, since I've been in discussion for it before the Puyo Tetris tournament, but I did get in trouble since it wasn't finalized for the new date when I thought it was. And in another instance about a year ago, Selen voiced her frustrations at the slow process of approval within the company and rule changes when she was organizing an art contest with a price pool of $5,000. Because of the very slow process and rule changes, she had to rush her art contest. Not only that, but had to fight for her to be able to give out a price money out of her own pocket. Sorry, I just got a little bit frustrated because they changed the rules with how illustration contests are hosted, but they didn't tell me about it. But in the past, I was allowed to give you guys a month now, but my ticket might expire. Uh, will expire if I give artists a month now. So I'm still setting it up at the moment. Still waiting for management and stuff. But like, I really don't want to... I don't want to rush artists. But literally, the only time I'll get another opportunity to get another outfit ticket is like... A long time. In my opinion, the whole song release was a complete PR disaster. Not because the song was halted, but because it went through all the release steps. Only after being done, promoted, and then published did management finally bring it up as an issue. This recurring pattern highlights the significant issues within Niji Sanji, where there's a disconnect between different parts of the organization. Again and again and again, it seems to be their biggest issue where the head doesn't know what the tail is doing. From a consumer standpoint, the company seems fragmented and lacks communication, missing the premium feel of a well-oiled machine. And I truly believe that fixing these operational issues would go such a long way as it would address most gripes people have with the company. However, what happened after took an eerily bizarre turn. After that tweet, Selene became completely absent from social media, missing out on a few planned collaborations. More recently, Niji Sanji had to cancel her appearance at Anime Impulse, with the event having to offer refunds to the affected fans. But shortly after, Selene tweeted from her main account, saying, Thank you to everyone for the support since I've been gone. I'm discharged from the hospital and my parents are helping me after my accident. Thank you to my dragoons for all the kindness and support. I will keep trying my best in the new year. You are what keeps me going. And then followed that tweet with, I apologize for the silence. I've been in the hospital after an accident and will be staying there for a few days to be under supervision. I just got back access to my phone yesterday. Thankfully, she is fine and well now, and we wish her the best recovery. However, the internet being the internet, this tweet still raised concerns. And while I don't agree with them, I can understand where they are coming from. After all, during the whole Zion leaks, we learned that talents did not have access to their social media accounts during stealth suspensions. Internet Detective also got on the case, some even going as far as pointing out discrepancies between the apostrophes, which I found quite hilarious. And just to be clear, they claim she never used the squiggly apostrophe, but I found several tweets where she did use those, so I'm pretty sure this is definitely unfounded as well. But I'm gonna move on from this topic for now. Two recurring team emerges. Firstly, management appears to be unreliable, and more significantly, 
Niji Sanji has lost the public trust over the years. A high degree of skepticism towards the company makes it difficult for people to believe them. And discovering attempts to silence creators and instances of dishonesty has led to understandable doubts about their statements. An air of secrecy looms over the corporation. While I hope they address their managerial issues for the sake of their talents and healthy competition in the v 2 being scene, rebuilding trust will be the more challenging aspect of repairing their damaged reputation. But it's doable. It's just gonna take time. Despite this, financially, the company is thriving. The Japanese division is flourishing and the overall stock price is on the rise. Honestly, public opinion doesn't have significantly affected them. And I can guarantee you that Niji Sanji isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Only time will tell if treating talents like they are products and having a policy of meritocracy within the company will work well in the long run. Economically, there are clear perks to this business philosophy. But what happens when fandoms start developing emotional attachment to these products? After all, they are not material objects, they are humans and the VTubing community is quite adamant on having these people being treated well and fairly. I can think of a few companies that have created products to which consumers have emotional attachments to, but also are known for their horrible management. We love their products. Well, most of them at least, but we are not afraid of criticizing these companies, so I don't see why it should be any different for a VTubing company. Why shouldn't we be able to criticize VTubing companies when they mess up? The whole Niji library has like 200 plus things. How many did, um, how many did graduate? But I mean, who's counting? Certainly not me. Anyway, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Check out my Patreon and until next time, peace out. At the center of Niji's marketing push was a revolutionary tech. At the center of Niji's marketing push was a revolutionary...